Hey guys, today we're going to be starting part 3 of the Nebula V2 build. We'll be working on the wings, electrical wiring, the motor mounts, and some more fiberglass in the fuselage. So let's start off with the motor mount. The motor mount is pretty simple. It contains the motor, the ESC, and the flap servo enca encased in a 3D printed shell that mounts to the wings. Here I'm just testing the motor direction, that way I can get the ESC plugged in right before I end up mounting it into the mount. I'm just using some zip ties to attach it on top of one of the grates that's used for airflow. The other portions of the motor mount are just attached with super glue until later on I fiberglass over them to connect them. Here I'm having a lot of difficulty getting the other flap servo to fit into the second motor mount. Even though they're from the same manufacturer and I ordered them from the same place, turns out that I ordered one batch a week before the other and the second batch is actually made from different material and is a different design. They're labeled both the same, but the wires, the material, and just the construction shape of the second batch is completely different from the first. And because of that, there wasn't enough clearance on the side to get it through without the cables getting cut. Next I'll be working on the wing mount. The wing mounts contain connectors for all the wiring going from the fuselage to the wing so that when you slot on the wing it connects directly to the motor mount and all the wires just get passed through. That way you don't have to manually connect anything when you slide the wings on. So here I'm putting the motor connectors together. how the piece came out with the power connectors embedded still have to put in the servo connections here I start putting the rest of the ribs on to the main spar and start flushing out the internals of the wing before I put the covering on one thing to note here is that none of the ribs are actually connected to the main central spar that gets slid into the wing mount and then either wing side gets slid onto that
connected to the spars using some CA glue and some accelerant to cure it faster. The outboard section of the wing uses one main circular spar and then a 6 by one millimeter square spar that goes the length of the front of the aileron. and the total wingspan is 254 centimeters with the center wing mount being 14 centimeters wide. I made it so the wings come apart and that the rear of the fuselage comes apart so I can actually transport it in my car. I forgot to record putting in the servo wires, but they're connected to a six pin connector on each side. The wing mounts Gorilla glued onto a center fiberglass piece that's on top of the fuselage. And I'm running an Omnibus F4 Pro with Ardu Pilot for the flight controller. These are the six pin connectors I'm using for the servo connections and the XT60 that's embedded for the motor power. few clips I'm just going to be fiberglassing the tail, the fuselage, and the motor mounts. I like to cover my fiberglass and wax paper while it's curing. 
It gives it a nice smooth finish and you can also place objects on top to pressure the surface while it's curing. Uh, if you plan on putting more layers of fiberglass on top, I wouldn't do this because you would want to have a rougher surface for the epoxy to attach to. When I was covering the fuselage sides, I tried to get pieces of fiberglass that were long enough to span the entire fuselage. Unfortunately, my sheets weren't long enough, so I ended up having some seams. I tried to have those about 4 centimeters past the joint of the nose and a little ways past the joint of the rear tail. I just tried to get the seams where they weren't on top of any crucial joints. So the total weight of the plane as it sits right now is 3.2 kilograms including batteries. This doesn't include the covering for the wings or the fiberglass for the wings. Just the fuselage without batteries is 2 kilograms. I ended up making custom hinges for the three doors into the aircraft and I'm going to close these with magnets. Here's all the wiring before I did some wire cleanup. I ended up cutting some channels into the side baffles so that the wires can be routed through them a little bit cleaner. But I ended up making the wires a bit too long so there's a lot of excess where the tail joint is. Same with the wing mount, I had to end up attaching the wires to the top to make room for payload. So I also made a detachable battery tray. This helps so that I can end up changing out the battery design later if I want to go to lithium ion battery packs. But the battery tray just pops out and has the battery straps. I also designed some prop spinners for the motor mounts, that way the airflow is a little bit cleaner around the motor. Here I start doing the wiring for the wings. This was probably the most annoying wiring job because of the male six pin connector. The uh, actual connector isn't the most robust and the pins kept bending on me when I was trying to attach it into place. Next time I definitely want to spend some more time looking for a more robust connector that isn't going to end up causing me a lot of trouble. <laughs> Although the XT60 connectors were pretty easy to embed into the wing mount and the wings and make pretty solid connections, I think the pressure fit on them is enough to hold the wings onto the wing mount too, as long as you're not doing any crazy aerobatics. This is one of the things I meant with the six pin connectors. Gorilla Glue ended up getting the connector stuck in the female side and when I pulled it out, the male pins actually just came out from the male connector. The aileron servos are just connected to one of the wing ribs using some foam baffles.
Overall, I'm pretty happy with how the plane's coming along, except for a few cosmetic things and some manufacturing defects where edges don't quite line up properly. Other than that, all the electronics are working properly and I hope to get the wing covered soon so I can try my first test flights. I'll probably hold off on painting the plane until after the successful maiden because I'd rather not go through the trouble of painting everything if it's just going to get smashed to pieces. Thanks for watching everyone.